Magic Mile is assigned for the New Hampshire 125 from New Hampshire Motor Speedway here in Loudoun. I'm Rick Young alongside Phil Parsons. A beautiful day for racing. A little overcast. The temperature 64 degrees. We had qualifying earlier today and Ray Dunlap is standing by with our pole sitter Brett Moffat. Let's go to him now. Well, Joe Gibbs racing race cars on the front row today and a big win earlier this year for Brett Moffat, but that was at Martinsville. Different track today, Brett. How hard are you going to push it early in this race? Um, we only get to take right side tires here, so we really got to save on our left side. So um, uh, we wouldn't be looking for a big lead early in the race. Hopefully we can just keep it up front. All right, good luck to you. That is Brett Moffat, car number 20, rolling off from the pole. And Phil, an impressive performance for Brett Moffat on this mile racetrack. Brett was able to set a new track record here. As you can see, the racetrack is very, very flat. Five degree more banking the higher up you go. 32 cars will start this race. Our pit window somewhere around 80 to 90 laps. Truex has a 66 point lead over Darrell Wallace Jr. 249 points over Eddie McDonald, Ray. Well, for Eddie McDonald fans, there hasn't been much to cheer about so far this season. Ninth in points with the best finish this year of fourth at Lee, New Hampshire. But when you come to this track, there's a lot of Eddie McDonald fans, and as well there should be. He's won three of the last five events here at New Hampshire, and last year he also won the ACT Late Model Tour. Watch for Eddie McDonald in car number 71 to be good today, guys. Thanks, right? Take a look at our starting grid as we get ready to go 125 laps around this magic mile. Up front, it was JGR. We've got Brett Moffat on the pole and his teammate Max Gresham making up row one. Yeah, see Ryan Truex back in the fifth position. Our point leader coming in here. Corey LaJoy had a great run here earlier this year. He starts back in row number five. Ty Dillon in row six, our most recent winner. He won at Gresham a week ago. Jason Pattis and Chad Boat making up row number eight. We've got a couple drivers that are making their first ever start in the NASCAR rank. Scott Stencil in the 37 and Keith Flack in the 08. So we'll have to keep our eye on those guys and see how they do. Timmy Hill, very limited experience in the NASCAR ranks. He actually ran one of the West races out at Irwindale and finished in the top 10. Scott Stencil in row 14. We just saw him as well as Keith Flack. So those two will start in 14 and 15 as the field is in line. The pace car is off the racetrack. The field now in the hands of Brent Moffitt in the number 20 as he brings him out of turn number four. Green flag in the air. We're underway. Pretty respectful start at the beginning of this one. So Eddie McDonald jump over to the inside to get underneath the 18 of Max Gresham. Is there a preferred line around the racetrack? Are we going to see guys on the bottom or up in that groove a little higher up? You know, we talked a little bit about this racetrack being banked a little bit more the higher you go. So you don't want to be right on the very bottom. It's only banked about two degrees. So you see Brett Moffat is up actually almost a full lane uh, off the bottom of the racetrack right now. And we saw Kevin Swindell in the number nine trying to make his way around the outside of the 71 of Eddie McDonald. He makes the pass. He moves up to third. So Andrew Ranger pull out of line there to make it too wide as they enter turn number one back about 15th side by side racing back there for 10th. I think we're going to see some side by side racing here at Loudon. We definitely will. As you mentioned only two races left here in the 2010 Canaan Pro Series season. There's our most recent winner right there Ty Dillon in the Waffle House number three trying to get under Darrell Wallace Jr. Our runner up right now in the point standings. Darrell Wallace Jr. Oh, and just behind him Alan Tardiff in the 38 got a little sideways coming out of turn four. Remember these cars start with a little bit of low air pressure so sometimes they're a handful. A good side by side battle for fifth right now with Ryan Truex and Cole Witt. Saw Kevin Swindell take a peek to the outside of Max Gresham in the 18 Swindell and the nine just behind him. They're battling for that second spot. Swindell is definitely using that outside line trying to work that groove in. He's hanging right with Max Gresham. Max Gresham now looks to the inside of his teammate. Gresham tucks back in behind Brett Moffat as they make their way into turn number one. Now to the outside once again. Here comes Kevin Swindell in the nine. Boy, it looks like Gresham just pulled over to the inside to give that outside lane to Kevin Swindell. See what Kevin can do with it. Now Max has pulled up beside his teammate Moffat. Battle for the lead. Max Gresham on the inside. Moffat on the outside. Is he going to clear him? He three. is able to clear him through three and four. Gresham takes the lead away from Brett Moffitt. That was a little bit of teammate. I'm going to give you a little bit of a break here. Gave him a little room early on in this one. So Swindell holding on his second. He looks to the outside now of Brett Moffitt for that second spot. Brett may have been holding up his teammate Max Gresham because Kevin Swindell has pulled to his outside now and I believe he's going to be able to pull this pass off. 
Swindell makes the move by the 20 of Brett Moffitt takes second away. So it's Max Gresham Kevin Swindell Brett Moffitt Eddie McDonald and the battle for fifth continues between Ryan Truex and Cole Witt looks like Ryan has it for a moment not quite able to clear Cole Witt though Cole hangs in there on the outside. Ryan Truex on the bottom of the racetrack Cole Witt on the outside at number 84 way higher on the racetrack that time by and so Ryan Truex takes fifth. Ryan Gifford right now follows Cole Witt that's the seventh place car. Fifth, sixth, and seventh. And then bias. Ryan was the fastest car in practice. Had a good qualifying effort, though qualified in the seventh position. By trying to lock up this championship again with just this race and Dover remaining in the season as we see a battle for the lead now. Here comes the nine of Kevin Swindell trying to take the position away from Max Gresham. He made that pass work on Brett Moffat. He looked like he was going to try it again on Max Gresham, but Max was too good through the center of the corner. We've seen Swindell try the higher line around this racetrack, going up about three grooves. Gresham staying right in that second groove. Good battle so far. Those cars look to be pretty evenly matched. Swindell jumps to the outside once again. He's, he has his nose up beside Gresham, but Gresham is able to get on the throttle in the center of the corner and score it out ahead of him. Looks like Swindell almost is diamonding this racetrack, taking it up a little bit higher in the center of the corner and then trying to bring it back down. I think if he could get through the center a little bit better, then I think he would stay up there and try to complete the pass. He seems to be pretty competitive. What's going on with Swindell, Ray? Yeah, great battle between the front two cars. Of course, Kevin Swindell tried the outside for a couple of laps. No question about it. You could say that New Hampshire is one of his best tracks. He finished third, tenth, and a career best second here at this track. So we know that New Hampshire and Kevin Swindell go together. Pretty impressive. Right now, he is giving Max Gresham all he can handle. Up front, Gresham holding the top spot. Swindell looks to the outside once again. Gresham holding his line. We're able to hold on to the lead a little bit loose off the corner for Gresham that time Swindell can get in the corner extremely well he gets his nose up beside Gresham but Max is able to get in that throttle in the center of the corner and drive away like he is right now great battle early on here in Loudon New Hampshire stay with us here on speed and welcome back during the break Jorge Artiega got into the wall in turn number two brought out our first caution so we're ready for our restart Gresham and Swindell will make up row number one Ryan Truex has taken over third. Coming out of turn number four, they'll show him the green flag, and we're back to racing. Cars are scattering before they get to the line there. Somebody must have been slow on the takeoff. Max Gresham chose the outside line. Swindell has the inside line. It looks like it might work for him as he goes through one and two. I think that was a good call by Gresham to do that. It didn't work out for him because he knew how good Swindell was on the outside. Hey, put him down to the inside. See if he can run there. But he took the lead. <laughs> he showed he could. Right there, a little contact between Eddie McDonald and Ryan Gifford. Those two sorted out as we have the battle for the lead once again. Here comes Gresham looking to the inside. Gets his nose up beside Swindell going down in turn number one. Swindell running better on the high line. Gresham running a little bit better down low. He keeps the nose of that race car right at the door of Kevin Swindell. And down the back stretch they go. A drag race side by side, door to door. Good run off the corner for Max Gresham. See what he can do when he gets down to turn number three. Ryan Truex said, go ahead and slide up out of my way if you want to. He's taking that inside line. A little contact oh. there. Max Gresham and Kevin Swindell. Swindell holds on to the lead as they cross the stripe. Here comes Ryan Truex. Troops had the momentum there. He, he may have just eased off a little bit. He doesn't want to take any chances early. We talk about him with a point lead coming into this race with two to go. Only 66 points out in front of Darrell Wallace Jr. If we get a caution right now. If we're we running, get a caution. Exactly. <laughs> we are running some great green flag laps. Tardiff and Gifford still trying to figure it out between the two of them. Eddie McDonald just in front of Ty Dillon in that Waffle House number three. There's that smoke we saw for just a moment. It doesn't appear to be tire smoke. We can be pretty hard on brakes at this racetrack. This is a very flat racetrack. It's a mile long. Yeah, definitely so. But I don't I don't think that's a brake issue as well. I think you would see that from a lot of other cars. So they may have a bit of an oil leak or something with that three car. NASCAR officials will be watching that to make sure that does not get any worse. Tardiff has the nose and 
most of the body in front of that two of Ryan Gifford. But again, Gifford hard has to lock up the left front. Almost gets into the 38 and around he goes. Ryan Gifford slides through one and two. Ryan just got in there a little bit too hot. Wasn't able to hold that car locked up the front brakes. Tried his best to stay out of stay off of Tardiff. Wasn't able to do it. I think because you mentioned the next caution that came out, a caution happened. <laughs> you think that was it, huh? <laughs> so Gifford goes around. Interestingly enough, locking up that left front tire, trying to stay out of the side of Alan Tardiff. And he goes around, and that brings out our second caution. Gifford will stay on the lead lap. He got his car righted and uh, back running before the leader got back. So we would expect everyone to make their way onto pit road. Stay with us here on Speed. Swindell and Gresham, one and two. And welcome back. The restart about to take place. Kevin Swindell on the inside. Cole Witt stayed out, chose the outside line for this restart. Max Gresham and Ryan Truex making up row number two. Back behind him, Brett Moffitt and Ty Dillon in row three. I think Cole Witt is the only car not to come to pit road and get fuel on that last caution flag. Little pit strategy early on. Green flag back in the air on lap 40. See Andrew Ranger about the fourth row back. Pulls up to make it three wide going in one. Three wide at Loud New Hampshire. A lot of times that doesn't work. It looks like these guys are going to make it work this time. Colwood able to get that lead from the outside. Good choice on the restart for him. Gresham looking at the inside of Kevin Swindell. Kobeluck making his way around. Swindell, Max Gresham, and Ryan Truex, two, three, and four as they come out of turn number four. These guys have put fuel in. Well, cars will be a little bit looser now because of that fuel behind the rear axle. A bit of added weight back there. Side by side racing for the fifth spot. Brett Moffitt and Ty Dillon. Dillon has it now. We see Ryan Truex on the inside of that 18 of Max Gresham for third. Those guys were battling before that caution flag and before the pit stops, and they're right back at it. Swindell is all over the back of Cole Witt's car in that battle for the lead. Cole Witt, Kevin Swindell, one and two. Battle for third continues between. The 18 of Max Gresham and Ryan Truex in the double zero. Ty Dillon has the fifth spot. Cole Witt running very well, not coming onto pit road, so no fresh tires, no fuel for that race car. He'll have to come in. Well, he's got at least 80 laps, 80 to 90 laps that he could stay on the racetrack, but it wouldn't be beneficial because these other guys are going to be able to get tires sooner. Yeah, and you want that track position when he gets down toward the end of the race. If he was going to wait that long to make his pit stops, then he would be behind a lot of cars because these, the way these races usually go, we have a lot of cars on the lead lap. Cole Witt right now hasn't got to victory lane yet this year, but three second place finishes. Pretty impressive run in season for him, so he is very close to getting that first win. Potentially happens here at New Hampshire. He's out front right now with Kevin Swindell chasing him. How about that battle for third again. Ryan Truex pulls to the inside, side by side with Gresham. Truex has to tuck back in behind the 18. Through one and two, they go way down to the bottom of the racetrack. As Ryan Truex, he got sideways, was able to keep it straight. Now down the back stretch, they continue to race for third, but a battle for the lead. Swindell to the inside of Cole Witt. Ooh, they oh, got a little, little contact. contact. Swindell gets to the inside of Colwood, hits the left rear tire. You see the letters are rubbed off of that left rear tire now. That's what's so difficult about making a pass on the inside. It's a little bit flatter down there. You don't have the grip. You don't have that little bit of banking to hold you. We see that so often. Swindell slid up the racetrack, got into the 84, the left rear quarter panel, but they stay straight. Gresham now has the third spot. Ryan Truex looking back to the inside, trying to take it. Gresham up the racetrack. Here comes Truex. Truex just eases in the corner. He tries to make up his ground through the center of the corner. He does. Now side by side at the start finish line. Now he tucks back in behind. Showing a lot of patience here. He knows there's a long way to go in this race. You have to be around at the finish. Alan Tardiff running in the sixth spot in that number 38. Just in front of him, the three of Ty Dillon. Here comes Truex once again. Truex now all the way down on the yellow line with his left side tires not able to hold it down there and here comes Gresham once again to take that third spot back. It's just so hard to get the momentum through the center of the corner. You try to get to the oh, around, around goes the 17 
Patterson gets turned around in the 17 coming off a of turn number four strains it back out but that brings out our third caution. Yeah Patterson kept it out of the wall. Cole Witt, Kevin Swindell Gresham Truex and Dylan your top five side by side racing stay with us. After the caution the top two stayed on the racetrack so we'll see how worn tires work for Kevin Swindell and Eddie McDonald. Swindell on the outside McDonald on the inside green flag back in the air. Who Chad Boat starting from the third position did not go on the start. They're three and four and five wide. Everybody scattering. A little contact there with Chad as he was trying to get to the bottom of the racetrack. Now it's three wide again, exiting turn two. Cole Witt, the 84 car in the middle. Oh, he makes a little contact. Bumping and banging early on in this race. Four wide, Truex to the bottom. Truex trying to take spots away. It's three wide now through three and four. Truex on the bottom, Cole Witt in the middle, Max Gresham on the outside. What great side by side racing. Remember most of these cars put right side tires on on that caution flag. With the exception of our top two and they are checking out right now. Kevin Swindell and Eddie McDonald looking very good one and two. Now we see Ryan Truex to the bottom of the racetrack trying to get by that 84 of Cole Witt. Not quite able to do it. It's the battle for the seventh position. Right behind him the 20 of Brett Moffat. He was our pole sitter. Alan Tardiff, the green car right behind Brett Moffat, and there's Miguel Paludo. First time we've seen him today. Pretty decent run right now, running up close to the top 10. Looks like Cole Witt had a little bit of a moment coming off turn four. Had to get Brett Moffat out of the throttle there for a second. Ryan Truex on the bottom, still trying to take that spot away from the 20 of Brett Moffat. Gets in front of him. There's the battle for four. Ty Dillon on the inside, just outside of him, and that number 60 is DJ Shaw. There's Max Gresham. He's going to pull up to the inside of DJ Shaw. So Ty Dillon's got the spot. Gresham trying to take it away from DJ Shaw now. The smoke coming out of the back of that three. Tardiff running a little higher line, trying to get by Ty Dillon. You just don't want to follow a car when it's smoking like that. You don't know if it's an engine issue, if that thing is getting ready to expire, and you certainly don't want it to do it right in front of you. Don't want to get caught up in any oil and slide into the wall. Miguel Paluto on the inside of Cole Witts. Here comes Darrell Wallace Jr. Haven't talked about him a lot today. Trying to battle his way up towards the top ten. There's Andrew Ranger going by. Ooh, Cole Witt a little bit sideways off a of turn two. <laughs> a lot sideways. Miguel Paluto just in front of Cole Witt. Witt digging, trying to get all he can out of that 84 Toyota. Impressive run for Miguel Paluto. Another car out of the Germain Racing Stables. Had a great top ten run in his Camping World Truck Series debut at Bristol. Who caution on the racetrack. And the fourth caution. And it's Zach Germain once again in that 24. He stops on the racetrack, and so they will bring out the caution as Kevin Swindell. Again, maybe an opportunity for him to come to pit road now as he has stayed on the racetrack, hasn't got fresh tires yet when everyone else has. And he doesn't have to come in and get fresh tires. We know he has enough fuel to get to the end. He may elect to stay out, or he may want to get those tires now. Stay with us. We'll find out. And welcome back. Kevin Swindell did relinquish the lead, came on to pit road for fresh tires. Truex and Alan Tardiff now one and two out in front of this field. Pace car makes its way onto pit road. Truex will set the pace as they come out of turn number four. Green flag back in the air. Alan Tardiff a little slow on the takeoff. Ryan Truex, oh, big wreck. Problems behind. Looks like Alan Tardiff slowed down. A couple other guys, DJ Shaw couldn't come up to speed. Daryl Wallace Jr., huge. Points implications for the six car. A lot of damage to that Revolution Racing car, front and rear for Darrell Wallace Jr. What a tough day for him, as well as Jody Lavender in the 88. He got caught up in this one. Yeah, tough break for Jody, running a limited schedule this year. Had a runner up finish, first time out at Greenville, but a huge amount of damage to that 88 car. That could be the end for Jody Lavender today. You see Darrell Wallace Jr. He's moving around the racetrack, but a lot of damage to the left front of that race car. Yeah, a lot of damage to the rear, but it doesn't look like it has affected the rear end. Actually, the rear end could be pushed over a little bit. There's Matt Kobluck. Tough break for him and his Mohegan Sun Chevrolet. Also some right side damage to that race car. Let's take another look at this restart. Usually when somebody doesn't get going, that always causes a chain reaction deal. And you can see the outside line going. Then DJ Shaw looks like he missed a gear. 
the four of Sergio Pena gets in the back of the six of Darrell Wallace Jr. Jody Lavender, Matt Kobluck, nowhere to go. Ryan Gifford in the two is able to avoid. So a tough situation on the restart. Ryan Truex and Alan Tardiff not having too many problems. They stay out front. Stay with us here on Speed. Getting ready for the restart now. Truex on the outside. Tardiff on the inside. Gresham Moffat and Anton making up the top five. We'll see if everyone gets back up to speed this time. As they come out of turn number four, green flag back in the air. Another good start by Ryan Truex. Tardiff a little bit of slow on the start. Three, four, five, and six wide on the restart. Max Gresham pulls to the inside of Tardiff in the battle for second. So Tardiff trying to hold on to second now as Gresham looks to the inside. And his teammate Brett Moffat on the outside in the 20. At 07 of Corey LaJoy coming into the picture now as he's in the top five. Corey had a good run at Iowa earlier this year finished in the fourth position. He ran the first loud race and finished eighth. See how he does today in the 07 right now looking pretty impressive in the top five. Joe Gibbs racing teammates still trying to battle it out for third. You notice right now Kevin Swindell gave up that lead. He's way way back right now with not a whole lot of time to get back towards the front. We'll see if fresh tires pay off for Kevin Swindell. That's what he came on to pit road for. See if they will work. Ryan Truex out in front and he's put a five car link lead over Alan Tardiff running in the second spot. The battle continues for that fourth position. Corey joined the outside a little slide up the racetrack by Max Gresham in the 18. LaJoy is able to clear him and take that spot. Yeah, Max Gresham does a nice job maintaining control. Jeff Anton, meanwhile, as well as Eddie McDonald, trying to get by the 18 at Gresham. Jeff Anton in the 30. Just can't keep it down on the bottom of the racetrack as he tries to get back in the gas. And now Gresham able to outrace him to the stripe. Gresham on the outside, Anton on the inside. Here comes Eddie McDonald in the 71, running that little bit higher line. 77 and Miguel Paluto is following that group right there. There's Colwood, Andrew Ranger, and there's Kevin Swindell right in front of the two car of Ryan Gifford. Swindell trying to take the position away from Andrew Ranger. Ranger's been very good on the road courses this year. See right now, Kevin Swindell just now making his way up into the top 10. But remember, he does have those fresh right side tires. We'll see if they pay off. So Swindell moves into the top 10. Again, Truex is setting a blistering pace out front. Ryan Gifford slides in behind the nine of Swindell, just in front of that 35 of Andrew Ranger. I'm sure Truex would love to see this race go caution free the rest of the way. Big lead. You see the lead there for the double zero of Ryan Truex. Alan Tardiff holding on to second. Pretty impressive run for Tardiff today. Two previous starts this year 25th finish at Martinsville and seventh at Loudoun. Yeah, Tardiff is going to attempt to make his nationwide debut next week at Dover. Big weekend at Dover with the k and Pro Series East divisions as well as the nationwide and Cup Series. Ryan Truex will be trying to claim his second championship at Dover. That's the final race of the season for the k and Pro Series East. Alan Tardiff again with an impressive run here, running in the second spot. A little loose coming out of turn number four, but able to keep it straight. Cole Witt. Making the move to the inside, trying to take that spot away from Kevin Swindell. Swindell on the outside again with a little fresher tires. We thought Swindell would work his way up to the front a little quicker. Yeah, he has not been able just to march through these guys. That means Goodyear brought an excellent tire to this racetrack, and and putting new tires doesn't doesn't make that much difference. Ryan Gifford running just behind Cole Witt, Andrew Ranger behind them. Top five: Truex Tardif. Moffat, LaJoy, and Gresham. After 92 laps, it's all Ryan Truex. Stay with us. And welcome back. Ryan Truex is a dominant lead over Alan Tardiff and Corey LaJoy. Those two are heating up on the racetrack, though. Here comes LaJoy looking at the inside of Alan Tardiff. What a great side by side battle. LaJoy on the inside and the 0 7 to 38 of Tardiff on the outside. Big half straightaway lead right now for Ryan Truex. LaJoy, his best finish fourth at Iowa earlier this year and looking to take second away from Tardiff, Ray. 
Randy LaJoy, Corey's father, up on the spotter stand telling him to breathe a little bit after he gets down the straightaway and find his rhythm. He's inside right now on Tardiff, and he has got a nice line just a little bit tight coming off the corner, said Corey LaJoy. Good run for the 07 team. I got to catch my breath, too. Those two running side by side for seconds, taking my breath away. Brett Moffitt right there in the 20 car, right behind that side by side battle. Brett running fourth. Scott Mooley in the 26 off the pace down at the bottom of the racetrack. These two continue for second. Now we're getting Moffitt in the 20 coming into play for the second position. The Joy tucks back in behind Alan Tardiff running third. Fourth is Brett Moffitt in the 20. I really like the line Alan Tardiff is running right now. He's up a little bit on the racetrack. A little more banking up there. Corey able to get the power down that time coming off for of two to pull up beside him. Looks inside for second. Corey LaJoy trying to take the spot away from Alan Tardiff. Right here is where it's very difficult to get that power down. You see Corey try to do it. Not quite able to, but he does stay side by side. Gets a little bit loose off of four. Sideways once again for Corey LaJoy. I think that's where his dad was saying, you got to breathe, son. Trying to get that nose underneath him again. Look at look at Moffat now trying to get under LaJoy. Sliding up the racetrack. Three wide for second as they go down the backstretch. Oh, the two of Ryan Gifford into the wall in turn number one. Caution flag is out. Ryan Gifford hits the wall hard in turn one. And that brings out the caution once again. I was watching Ryan Gifford. It looked like maybe he cut a tire down. Something broke on that right front. Pretty hard contact. So caution number six comes out after 104 laps inside of 20 laps of racing when we come back. Final 20 laps of racing coming up from Loudon, New Hampshire. It's Ryan Shrooks on the outside. Alan Tardiff on the inside. Corey LaJoy in that 07. And Brett Moffitt making up row number two. Green flag back in the air. Oh, a great restart for Alan Tardiff. This is what Ryan Shrooks did not want to see. A restart. Alan Tardiff dead even going in one. Tardiff's got the inside line. Shrewex, who's been running down at the bottom of the racetrack, looks as though he's going to lose the lead. Alan Tardiff, your new leader, going down the backstretch. What a great move by Alan Tardiff trying to get win number one here in the K&M Pro Series East. Things are heating up with just 10 laps of racing to go. Now to the inside for second. Here comes the 0-7 of Corey LaJoy. Truex on the outside. Look at Swindell. He wants to make it three wide. Moffitt's going to pull his inside, side by side for second. Ryan Truex trying to nose in front of Corey LaJoy at the stripe. These guys know we're getting down to it inside of 10 laps to go. It's money time. 0-7 has taken the second spot away from Ryan Truex. So Corey LaJoy now up into second. What a great move by Corey LaJoy. He just drove it hard down into turn number three, and it stuck. Now a battle for fourth. Kevin Swindell on the outside. Brett Moffat on the inside. Swindell holding on to the position. Moffat gets a little sideways. Truex has dropped back to third, Ray. What's up? And guys, Truex coming on the radio just now saying he's very, very tight. He was somewhat aggravated with the 38 there. He said, if he keeps chopping me like that, he's going to get spun out. While he was on the radio with that communication, Corey LaJoy in the 07 went right by. So Corey LaJoy now chasing the 38 of Alan Tardiff. It's one and two for those two. They've never been to victory lane. It could happen today. Stay with us here on Speed. With five to go. Coming down to the last laps here at Loudon, New Hampshire, Alan Tardiff, Corey LaJoy, one and two, Ryan Truex running third, Kevin Swindell fourth, and Brent Moffitt in fifth. But Moffitt trying to take the position away. Side by side for the lead, Corey LaJoy to the inside. Corey LaJoy looks like he has the preferred line as they go into three and four. LaJoy on the bottom trying to take the lead away from Alan Tardiff. Tardiff able to push back on the outside. He's able to hold on as they come to the stripe. They're still door to door. Tardiff by a nose. LaJoy pulls a nose ahead, getting in turn number one. Here comes Corey LaJoy. Looks like he might be able to take the spot away. No, here comes Tardiff once again on the outside. Tardiff trying to race him back down the back stretch. Tardiff a little bit loose up off of two again. Never got out of the throttle. Tardiff on the outside. LaJoy on the inside. Here comes Ryan Truex once again. These two racing side by side for the lead, allowing Ryan Truex to come back into this one. Side by side at the stripe again. Tardiff just about a foot in front of 
The 0 7 of Corey LaJoy. LaJoy muscles back through one and two, a little sideways, and Tardiff's going to jet back out to the lead down the back stretch. Ooh, Corey gets a little bit loose again, loses just a little bit of momentum, but he stays side by side. With the laps winding down, just a few to go. Here comes the 0 7. Corey LaJoy trying to take the spot away from Tardiff. What a great side by side battle. Ryan Truex has the best seat in the house watching this battle. Truex wants something to happen with these two so that he can get by, but they're racing very clean. The joy giving Tardiff plenty of room, almost a car width in between the two cars as they come out of turn number two and down the back stretch. Tardiff had a good exit to the corner there off of turn number two. Corey got a little bit sideways up off the corner. Here comes Corey LaJoy. drives it in there hard. Really hard. Contact in front. Tardiff goes around. LaJoy goes around. Truex takes the lead. Unbelievable. They were so clean. They had not touched. And all of a sudden, looked like Corey got a little bit loose, had to chase it up the hill, made contact with Tardiff. And around they both go hard into the outside wall for Alan Tardiff. What a horrible into his race. Oh, and he looks so good running that high line. Corey LaJoy had been giving him so much room, and then on this lap, LaJoy moves up the racetrack, turns him around. Let's look again. See, Corey drives in the corner now. Remember, it's a little bit flatter down there. He moves up the hill. He gets a little bit loose. They make contact. Nothing that Alan Tardiff could do into the outside wall hard. Corey could not maintain control. Meanwhile, run. Truex said, See you guys. Wow. Ryan Truex takes over the top spot now. This could be his second win at this racetrack this year. Ryan Truex in front. Stay with us here on Speed. NASCAR's version of overtime. We've gone past the prescribed distance, and now Ryan Truex on the inside. Kevin Swindell on the outside. We're a green-white checker situation. Green flag goes in the air. Good restep. Oh! oh. Trouble. The 18 of Max Gresham slams into the back of the nine of Kevin Swindell, and they go sideways and wreck right at the line. Unbelievable. Look, Truex got a real good restart here. Let's see if we can watch what happened with a nine in the 18. Watch on the outside there. You see the double zero on the inside go, and the nine just didn't quite go fast enough. Gresham was trying to help him get going, and he turned him into the outside wall. Made a little contact with the 20, his teammate. Brett Moffitt, but Moffitt able to keep going. And then they bunch up right at the start finish line. Well, we're going to try again for a green white checkered restart. Again, Truex will be up front. Now, the 20 of Brett Moffitt has some damage to the right front. You're seeing some smoke come out of that race car. So he'll have to make his way to pit road. They're going to continue cleaning up the racetrack. We'll be right back. Second attempt at a green-white checker finish for this race. Ryan Trex now has Brett Moffitt on his outside. We'll see if he's able to hold on to that spot. Cole Witt just behind Moffitt and behind Ryan Trex is the 30 of Jeff Anton. Green flag back in the air. Oh, sideways. Look at Cole Witt almost into the outside wall. They stay straight this time. Miguel Paluto drives up into the third position. Miguel Paluto seizing the opportunity takes third away from Eddie McDonald. Now in front, it is Ryan Truex trying to hold off Brent Moffitt. One and two down the backstretch. Trying to get to the white flag here. He knows if he can get to the white flag without the caution coming out. This will be an official race. See a little bit of smoke out of the back of that 20 car. Remember, the right front is rubbing right now. White flag out. One to go for Ryan Truex. Truex trying to duplicate the feat he had here earlier. Going to victory lane. Brett Moffitt a little smoke. One last attempt for Moffat, though. Down the back stretch they go. A little bit of cushion for Truex. He has a couple car links on Moffat. Jeff Anton drives to the inside of Paluto in a battle for third. Ryan Truex trying to pad his stats and get another win, as well as more points in this championship battle. Ryan Truex is going to win in New Hampshire. Great job by Ryan Truex. Very, very patient the entire race. Jeff Anton with a terrific third place finish ties his career best. And Miguel Paluto gets his career best with a fourth. A great points day. Ryan Truex wins the New Hampshire 125 as well as led the most laps. So he gets those five bonus points. Brett Moffitt congratulating him, waving to him as he goes by. We're going to hear from our winner once again and points leader when we come back to the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. 
Loud New Hampshire may be the new favorite site for Ryan Truex as he gets his fifth career win and second win right at this racetrack in 2010. Let's hear from him. He's with Ray. Here comes Ryan Truex out of the double zero. Even though the car was out of gas, he got her back here to victory lane. An impressive run here in June. I remember thinking how cool it was that you, your brother, and your dad had won here, but I assume today's was just a little bit harder work. Yeah, definitely. I'm cold. They just soaked me. Uh, yeah, it was hard. It was tough. Ran out of gas on the uh, cool down lap there, so it was going to be close. And I was proud of all these guys. Just gave me a great car. And you know, they give me the best car out here every week and make my job a lot easier. So I, I heard you on the radio talking about that restart with about 20 to go, and you were a little bit concerned whether or not you were going to get back to the front. Yeah, yeah, our car started getting real tight there at the end, but, um, you know, we uh, turned the front blowers off and tried to get some heat in the front tires for the last restart. It's been cold here, so it's hard to get grip in the tires at the end, and uh, you know, they just told me to do that, did that, and we uh, just had good restarts, and the car was just awesome, so can't thank these guys enough in Napa, and everybody that helps out every weekend. All right, continue the celebration. And mishap in the pits, but the double zero gets back to victory lane here at New Hampshire. Thanks, Ray. Let's take a look at the results. Ryan Truex, Brett Moffat, one and two. Jeff Anton, a great finish. Miguel Paluto, a career best finish for him in fourth. Yeah, Cole Witt ends up with a top five. Eddie McDonald battles his way to a sixth place finish. Daryl Wallace Jr., with all that damage, ends up with a top 10 finish. And keeps Ryan Truex in his sights with just one race to go in this championship run. How about Alan Tardiff? After running so well, ends up 25th on the field. Yeah, Ryan Gifford, hard contact with a turn one wall, ends up with a 28th place finish. Jorge Artiega first to go out when he hit turn one wall. 